I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. You know, I always say all the time, anybody can invest. And nowadays, even building a portfolio is really as easy as one, two, three. Uh, starting the account, going in, funding the account. And then the fun part, the part that I really like is actually building the account out and actually selecting the products or the stocks or the ETFs or index funds that you want to put in your portfolio. It's it's a lot of fun. And I think a lot of people are breaking down those barriers to entry and understanding that uh, um, that that fun is, is available for them as well. Uh, wealth building is a really good time. And I think the individualization of, of the program is is also not to be overstated. I, I think there's a portfolio out there that, that makes sense for everybody. And I, I think with a little bit of coaching, uh, a little bit of guidance, and uh, with the help of the platforms nowadays, have made it so simple. M1 Finance is just one of many examples of those accounts out there that uh, make investing easy and, and, dare I say, fun. So with that, we're going to jump in and do a, a review of the M1 Finance account. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is a, an account that I chronicle on the channel all the time. Because not only do I get to chronicle a real portfolio, I also get to provide some insights on, on how I look at portfolio building, how I look at the account in general, uh, and, and how I um, strategically build out um, my multiple buckets, this just being one, um, this being heavy handed in the dividend growth element. What that means is this is a, a, ba a basket of single stocks. Uh, divided up across the S&P 500 in what is um, a total pie. And each of the uh, slices of the S&P 500 represent a piece of, of my total pie. So as I go around here, I've got utilities and consumer discretion and industrials. And for those of you out there that are beginning investors, these are some of the terminologies that you could become uh, uh, accustomed to. Technology, everybody's heard of Microsoft, Apple. Right, materials. You got Lend. We've got uh, Sher Sherman Williams, BHP Billiton, things like that. Exxon Mobil, Chevron. So as we go around here, you can kind of understand which of the companies that fit in uh, to some of these specific slices. But top end here, we're flirting with twenty thousand in the portfolio. So nothing crazy. Um, we've had this portfolio since uh, December twentieth of two thousand nineteen. Uh, it's done quite well uh, looking at um, staring down 9,000 of, of capital appreciated dollars in the portfolio. So, you know, we don't invest uh, entirely for fun. Uh, we, in, we invest to make money and uh, we've got a little dividend income here to boot. This grows and has been growing incrementally uh, over the last year specifically. So three and a quarter on the dividends, not too bad. And then, of course, um, slightly leaning to the right here over what has been a conducive market. Now, each of the slices that I talked about are represented here. And this is just how I choose to portfolio build. It doesn't mean that you're, um, you need to you know, copy this. You can. Uh, I make these portfolios available in each of these videos. You guys can review uh, the holdings that I disclose to you. Um, during the course of these videos, you can use the structure, you can take out, omit certain stocks within each of these categories as you see fit. You can use it as a baseline, use it as a, a, a backbone or a structure uh, as you will. And this is really just to break down barriers for people and say, where the heck do I start? And it avoids people having to invest on a blank palette, really. It, it provides some structure and guidance uh, to to investing in that if you can look at this and you know you're really interested in investing and maybe you've done a little bit of research um, to start to take it to the next level you can see somewhat of the method to my madness here how I've uh, basically assigned a target allocation to each of these slices here 15 percent of my dollars goes into technology 14 percent into healthcare. Uh, 13% into financials and so on. And you might think, well, where did that come from, Ryan? I don't I don't know if I want to do technology first. I would rather do healthcare, number one. Absolutely. Everything that I talked about at the top of this video about being customizable now and, and really just uh, unique to the individual, it could, couldn't be more true. You can build this however you want to, which is really the beauty of, of not only M1 Finance, but, but a lot of platforms out there that allow you the opportunity to buy um, single stock in a portfolio like this without a lot of money. 
So if we go over here to the holdings element of the portfolio, the largest uh, of the holdings is, is Amgen, a Dow component and Goldman Sachs right below it. Another Dow component, I got five Dow components on the top end here actually, which is great. And you can kind of see here, if you're a new investor and you look at this and say, well, how, how good could this perform? It's relative. It's a matter if you're starting with $500 and you're making pennies, or you're starting with a few thousand dollars and you're making dollars in dividends and capital appreciated dollars. I've got about 20,000 in this portfolio. So, you know, the, the, the gains are, are becoming a little bit more of a snowball effect. And that's what happens once you get to that larger amount. I think people sometimes fall victim to not allowing their portfolio to get off the launching pad and, and really start that snowball effect for them. And the snowball effect should be uh, evident to you in scrolling down through these uh, 71 holdings, I believe is what we've held true on this. I haven't added a whole lot to this portfolio. This is just a really, really fun portfolio. It's just a lot of fun to invest this way. You know, I, you know, if I were to guess that I would have been up 30% in Eli Lilly, I, I don't know, the, but $91 and 49 cents on what's just shy of two shares in the company is, is pretty remarkable. It really is. So if you're thinking, I don't know if single stock is for me, Ryan, well, this is a way to put a little bit of money to work in a lot of different places. And I think a lot of people try to construct a portfolio with 25 stocks. There's a very good chance that you could miss out on some appreciation on stuff that you don't pick. And conversely, there's a good chance that you could pick a few bad apples and end up you know, with some stocks that go south on you and don't work out. This is a great way of, of kind of spreading your money out, not diluting your money, but diversifying across multiple stocks. These are all great companies guys. These are you know, companies that have been well-established. I'm a value investor at heart. These are companies that I enjoy having an element of, of um, exposure to. Some of them I own uh, in larger capacities in the other accounts, but not much, not much. Some of the companies that I have just larger conviction for, like Disney and IBM, I do own in the Roths. Southern Company is a great example. I do own a bigger position, I think a 50 share position, which here is only five shares, right? And that's okay. It just helps fill out that utilities element of this uh, dividend growth portfolio that I'm trying to build. Now, I do have a strategic goal of $100,000 on this account. It, could this account, the way that it's built now and the structure and foundation, handle $100,000? Absolutely. This account could handle a million easy um, with the amount of quality names in here. Uh, I've done a, a pretty good job of, of diversifying across the sectors and giving some pretty good representation from each of the sectors of the S&P. Uh, so as we scroll down here, you're going to see a lot of green. Could not be happier with the performance within this portfolio. And some of these, nothing to shake a stick at. You, know, you, you miss out on this 26% of performance and you might say, well, that's only on four shares, Ryan. Yeah, yeah that, that's true, but it's better to have invested in the company than not to have invested at all because I would have been at zero had I just made the easy decision not to invest. Leggett and Platt, look at that at 17%, up 36 bucks on a relatively small position. That's a $200 position. I would uh, venture to guess that you're probably not going to do that well or even have a chance of doing that well in a savings account, right? So stuff to keep in mind when you're asking yourself, how could this fit into my personal program? Do you invest? Do you solely put your money into a savings account? Maybe you want to leverage some of that money into a program like the one I'm demonstrating for you right now, getting a little bit more power punch to your money. Put some money in Coca-Cola, a dividend king that's paid a dividend for over 50 years. Oh, what a great opportunity to you know leverage your opportunity made possible through the independent investor channel um, to get your dollars to work direct connected to some of these great companies out there. TJ Maxx, I love this company. I'm down $3.39. I can live with that. Okay. Again, it's putting capital to risk as opposed to just doing what is um, safe. And that is a savings account with a bank. But I think you can see here 
uh, as we roll these out, I'm down five bucks on Walmart. That's a sore spot in the portfolio. <laughs> have to work a little bit harder in my due diligence, I guess. But that's the end of the list here. And, um, you know, I, I think the majority of these holdings are up. I didn't do an account of, of where we are, but I will share this portfolio. It's not meant to be memorized over the course of a rollout. It's meant to give me the opportunity to showcase this, ask and answer what it could mean for you guys, um, try to find a strategic place for this, if indeed there is one, or at least provide an awareness piece to those folks out there who may not think that stock market investing is as achievable or as obtainable as they think that it is. And I'm here to tell you, there, there are no barriers to entry. I buy these stock free of charge. Uh, I uh, enjoy partial shares in some capacity. This is less than a share here in Thermo Fisher Scientific of Ago, the Broadcom holding here, less than a share. So the partial shares make this possible for me to spread my money out in the capacity that I do to make sure that we're um, achieving that diversification uh, within the account. So really appreciate you guys tuning into this uh, portfolio review with M1 Finance. These are a lot of fun for me to do. Catch my insights. Listen to me explain my philosophies behind. Uh, I'm not one of those YouTube channels that come on and just tell you, hey, you need to invest like me or I've got conviction in the stock. That means that you have to have conviction in the stock. If we go below the surface and we talk about the, the fundamental element of how I approach wealth building, stock market investing, it starts to widen the reach to those folks out there who may be also looking to put a program together for themselves. If you appreciate the message and make sure subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video, hit the thumbs up, notification bell, uh, all of the above to help us support the message that we're putting through. Thank you so much for tuning into the message. And good luck in your investment future.